What is going on everybody and welcome to part 13 of our intermediate Python programming tutorial series. In this tutorial what we're going to be doing is jumping into object oriented programming. So object oriented programming is a concept that's a little hard to define in very few words but I think it's a lot easier to understand when you just do it. But the purpose of object oriented programming is to create objects and these objects have attributes and then they also have methods. So the attributes are like characteristics and the methods are basically actions or ways for us that we can actually interact with these objects. Now for this tutorial, I'm going to be making use of Pygame, which is a pretty simple game library for Python. It works really well, at least on Windows and Linux. On Macintosh, it's a little more difficult, but you can go to pygame.org slash wiki slash Macintosh, and they have like updated instructions. At least it looks here like maybe it will work on the latest Python 3. As far as I know, it, it definitely works on 3.1, so you might have to get a different version of Python. Um, that might be kind of annoying, but I do think that Pygame or some other way of actually visually seeing what you're working with uh, is an exceptional way to learn either just programming in general or some sort of programming concept, especially object oriented programming where we're creating this thing that has like characteristics and does things and is interacted with and objects can interact with each other and all this kind of stuff. I think it makes a lot of sense to use something like Pygame so we can actually visualize what's happening as well. So that's what we're going to do on Windows and Linux. You should just be able to do pip install pygame and you're good to go. So hopefully you can figure that out. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to ask in the, um, in the comments. And otherwise, let's get started. So first of all, the thing that creates an object is a class. So we're going to define, we'll just start by defining a uh, class and we're going to call this class blob and what we're going to do at least to start is we're going to be creating a sort of blob world that consists of an environment that these blobs are living within and the blobs will interact with each other but also just the general environment they can do things in the environment but first we need to define what this blob object actually is, what are its attributes, and what are things that this blob can actually do. So just class blob colon and you're good to go. And right away we're going to define the first, um, our first method and what we're going to do is we're going to define the dunder iter, or not dunder iter, <laughs> dunder init method. Dunder iter will come eventually, but dunder init is the first one we're going to do and we're gonna pass self, and then we're gonna pass uh, color. So um, what these arguments do is self is just this, this instance, it's this object instance um, that we're gonna be able to share throughout the entire object here. So throughout the entire class, the things that we define as like self dot something, like to start we're gonna have uh, maybe self dot color since we're passing color here that's gonna have some sort of value. We're gonna set that to be whatever color is. So now this object, this is an attribute of this object, right? And we can reference it in the definition of the class anywhere in, uh, in another method. It doesn't have to be in the um, init method. Uh, so we can reference this elsewhere using self dot, but then outside of this, when we actually do create the object and save it to a variable name, we do that variable name dot color and that is how we can access the color attribute. You'll see that more as when we get there. But self is just, you can pick any name for self, but self is just the standard kind of protocol that people use. Uh, since we're trying to do as proper as possible code, code that scales, code that can be read by other people, we're gonna call that self and we're not gonna deviate from that. I'm not sure I've ever seen anyone deviate from that, but you could if you wanted to be a real jerk. <laughs> so anyway, uh, there we have that. Uh, the other things that we're gonna add to this blob, basically the, the init method, what this is gonna do is when the, when the object is created, whatever the init method is, is just gonna run, okay? 
So when, when the blob is born, these are things that are going to be set about the blob. So we're saying when this blob is born, it's assigned a color because we've got color as a, as a argument here. And we're also going to assign it um, a location because it's going to be born and it's going to appear in this environment somewhere. So we're going to say self.x and we're going to say this, we have an imported random, but we'll do that in here in a second. Random.randrange. And we'll say it's zero to the width, and we also don't have width yet. We're gonna we'll we'll bring that one in as well. Um, but I just wanted to keep this just the class for now. But the width will be the the width of the the, the environment basically. So in Pi game, you'll bring up a window. We'll probably do like 800 by 600. So width will be like 800 pixels. So this could be anywhere between zero and 800. Then we're going to do set, whoops. Then we'll do self.y equals random.rand range. Uh, and this will be zero to the height. Now we're going to do a self.size. So how big is the blob going to be? Basically, these are just all things that we have to know about the blob to, to show the blob on the screen, right? We need to know at least these things. That's why they're going to be in the initialization method here. So self.size, we're going to do random.rand range, and this will be four to eight. It's a little arbitrary seeming at the moment, uh, but but Pygame does sizes this way, and it isn't, maybe it's pixels. I, eh, it's not pixels, I don't think. It's not four to eight, so I'm not really sure, but obviously the bigger you go, we can kind of tweak that, and you'll see what I mean. It It's the same thing. It's like maybe, I don't know. I'm not really sure what the, what the, uh, metric is here but anyway i don't think it's pixels uh and then that's i think that's it that's all we need in the dunder init method now um now we're going to say another method and there are other basically the the init method again this is one of these um special methods of python they're also lovingly referred to as uh, magic methods and there are a lot of magic methods we will talk about a few others I accidentally Freudian slipped the dunder iter method which we can use with generators for example and a lot of other cool things uh, which I'm not really sure blob will have a, d a dunder iter method but maybe who knows but anyways there are a lot of magic methods but you don't have to have them and similarly you don't have to have an init method you're, well, you have one, you just don't have to define one. Um, so you didn't have to do this, but m in mo many cases, you're gonna need to, you're gonna wanna set some initial attributes. So, uh, so we have one, but we can also define other methods and methods pretty much look and act just like functions, okay? They just need self to be passed. So this next method, we're gonna call move. And just for the record, naming conventions and such, um, methods have the same naming convention as functions. Classes have studly cased names, so this might be blob class or, or something like that. Um, but we're just going to keep it blob one word. So now the move method, we don't, we're not going to pass anything besides self here. And we're just going to say self.movex for now is going to be equal to random.rand range. Uh, we'll do negative one to two. Then we're going to say self.move y will be equal to random.rand range negative one to two again. So this will be basically anything from negative one. It, it can be any possibility, negative one, zero, or one. So in these movements, these movements will be in pixel form. So at each frame, it can either move, it can move one pixel in any direction, up to one anyway. Sometimes it might not. Then we're going to say, we're going to update self.x. So this is how we're kind of sharing. We're not redefining necessarily. Uh, well, we are redefining, but basically this is going to modify the self.x attribute. And we're going to say uh, plus equals self.moveX. And then self.y, we're going to say plus equals self.moveY. Now, the idea is that this is going to interact in an environment and for now, we're going to set some limitations on the blob uh, class. And we're just going to say that we know it's interacting within this window of width and height. So we're going to go ahead and just say, basically, um, if self.x is less than 0, we're going to say self.x equals 0. 
elif self.x is greater than the width, we're going to say self.x equals self.x equals the width. And then we're going to do the same thing basically uh, with y. So we're going to say if self, whoops, we're going to say if self.y is less than zero, self.y equals zero. And then elif self.y is greater than the height, we're going to say self.y equals height. Cool. So we do that. Um, alternatively, one thing you can do, just because this takes up a lot of space, you can do this and put those on one line. I'll let you decide which you think is better. Personally, I find this to be cleaner if you've got really simple, um, simple information. I think it's easier to read personally. So if you're not really having too much on each line, I don't see a problem with this. But if I was to guess, I would say that's not pep eight, but I'm gonna keep it on one line. I prefer it on one line. Um, I think it's more beautiful. So we have ourselves our starting blob class. And I think what I'm gonna do is stop it here. That's all we're gonna add to the blob class for now. And in the next tutorial, we are going to use Pygame. We're going to create the environment and we're gonna plop this blob into the environment and see what we got. So if you have questions, comments, concerns up to this point, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next tutorial.